Hi, this is Mr. Lozier, and these are your notes on circular motion. Um, and we are going to go ahead and make these really super short. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is talk about the difference between rotation and revolution. So this should be a review for all of you, but let's go ahead and just talk about it really quickly. So when I'm talking about rotation, I'm talking about things like the Earth is rotating on its axis. So you can see the axis drawn there um, in yellow. And that chair, if you spin around in an office chair, you're rotating around the axis of the office chair. Revolution is when I say like a planet revolves around the sun. So when you're actually revolving around the sun, you're actually going around this center point. And if these um, carousel horses on the merry-go-round are revolving, or revolving, they're going around the center point. So all the horses go around the outside um, of the carousel or the merry-go-round. So that's the difference between rotation and revolution. And this is important because we are going to be talking uh, mainly about revolution um, for the next couple days. So here's what's going on. Um, we're going to be talking about something called centripetal force. Uh, and you might have heard about that before. You might not. Not really a big deal if you have or you have not. Basically, centripetal force is just a force that holds something moving in a circle. Um, and up to this point, we've really only talked about um, moving in a straight line. So let's say that I'm standing in the hallway and I've got a tennis ball tied to a string and I'm swinging it above my head. So the tennis ball is moving in the direction of uh, this arrow right here. So uh, this arrow right here. So let's say I'm moving in that direction um, and I'm, so I'm moving uh, counterclockwise and I'm swinging the ball around my head. So you can imagine that what would happen is at the next position it would look something like this. So I've got the tennis ball there and now it's moving in that direction. So that's pretty standard and if we keep going tennis ball's there moving in that direction. And then in the last position, tennis ball's there, and it's moving in that position. So the tennis ball is going to move in a circle. So I have a question, which direction is the ball moving? Well, the ball's moving that direction, and that's the direction of the velocity, counterclockwise. So my velocity vector, the direction that my ball is moving, the ball is always moving along that outside line. And for those of you that um, have taken... Uh, or remember your geometry, that's terrible. You will remember that this outside line, I'm just going to draw it, this outside line is tangent, tangent to that circle. So I'm basically moving the ball tangent, the velocity is tangent. So it's going to make a right angle with this center line. Okay, now, so what's that center line? Let's talk about that. So that is the force. Um, the force is acting inward. You know the force is acting inward because what's actually holding the tennis ball moving in the circle? Uh, that would be the string because if the string wasn't there, would the tennis ball keep moving in a circle? No, it would fly off in one direction. So the force is inward towards your hand, and that is also going to be the direction of the acceleration. Um, and that is what we call centripetal acceleration and centripetal force, that inward pull that keeps the object moving in that circle. And that's what holds the planet's... Um, in orbit. So like if you imagine that the sun is at the center of the circle, then it's exerting a constant force towards the sun on the planets and that keeps them moving in that circle. Why does that matter to you? It matters to you because you need to be able to calculate the centripetal force and the centripetal acceleration. So we already know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So here's how you calculate centripetal acceleration. You're going to use the acceleration, centripetal, is equal to the velocity squared. Um, and that is going to be times, we need to, we need, not times, divided by the radius. So radius of the circle is the length of one of those vectors there. So divided by the radius. So uh, centripetal acceleration is just v squared divided by r. Pretty simple, right? Now I'm just going to plug that into the formula for force, and I'm going to get force centripetal is going to be equal to mass times velocity squared divided by the radius. And that's it. You just need to be able to use those formulas. We're not going to mess with any pi's or finding circumferences or anything like that. Just make sure you know how to use those two formulas.